What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the Monday, July 29th, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy News Beat Stand Up. Here are today's top headlines. First up, it's officially here, folks. BRICS officially announces financial system to compete with SWIFT. Unbelievable, folks. We've got a lot to dive into on that one. Next up, potential increase in gas bills for UK households. This one's going to hurt if you're in the United Kingdom. We'll then quickly jump over and cover what went on with oil and gas prices last week. Unfortunately, we did see kind of a rough week for prices. I mean, rough in a, in a pejorative sense. We're still at $75 or $77, so nothing to complain about there, but I think some interesting tidbits. We also did see rig counts, which actually up a little bit. So it'll be interesting, some context around that. And then finally, Vital Energy kneeling a deal to buy Point Energy for $1.1 billion, according to sources. Not quite official yet, though as you listen to this on Monday, it might be official. So I will cover all that in a bag of chips, guys. As always, I am Michael Tanner, rocking a solo show today. Stu is out on assignment, so we will keep up the show in his absence. But let's go ahead and kick this off. Bricks officially announces financial system similar to SWIFT. Unbelievable. I'll read a few quotes here from the article. The BRICS alliance, which who is in BRICS? I think it's Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, Iran, Egypt, Ethiopia, and the United Arab Emirates. Okay, so this BRICS, which is kind of like almost like NATO, but not really. There's no real army associated with it. But these countries, they've created and are looking to bypass the Western SWIFT system and replace it with its own financial mechanism. The creation of this new financial messaging system will be similar to SWIFT, will allow BRICS to basically settle trades and settle transactions without incorporating the U.S. dollar. This is un unbelievable. Local currencies will be used for trade settlements, ending the reliance on the U.S. dollar once and for all. The BRICS payment system will be similar to SWIFT, can break the global dominance of the U.S. dollar. We've talked about this at nauseum on this show. Here's a quote from Deputy Chairman of the Russian State, Dumar Alexander Babakapap. I don't really know how to pronounce his name, so I'm sorry about that. The financial agenda of BRICS has the main initiative for building a new economic reality that solves both major tax credits creating our own financial messaging system for BRICS countries similar to SWIFT based on state-owned banks capable of clearing clearing settlements of counterparties from BRICS countries and the related role of the same bank. He also went ahead and said it is necessary to create new financial institutions. This is where it gets spooky. The new system must be technically compatible with the existing financial infrastructures of the participating countries, which includes integration of national payment system banks and other financial institutions at the same time. Systems must ensure a high level of security and data protection to prevent cyber attacks and unauthorized unauthorized access to the financial information. Folks, we've been talking about this on the podcast for over a year now. They're coming for the dollar. And when I mean coming for the dollar, the petrodollar is, 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 may or may not be around here in a while. We've known that they want, ever since Russia invaded Ukraine and the sanctions that the United States put on Russia, specifically basically getting them off and not giving them access to SWIFT, which is a, a payment system that allows countries to do international banking, but things are then settled in the dollar. Hence the rely on the dollar and why the dollar sometimes is the national or is the reserve currency of the world. It also has a little bit to do with the petrodollar, but this strikes at the heart of it. Now these BRICS countries are going to be able to do inter-country commerce without touching the dollar. This is crazy. The reserve status of the dollar is slowly dwindling. And this, this is critical because this ties directly into energy again with the petrodollar. Right now, if you want to trade oil, generally it's being it's settled in dollars, but not. Ever since Russia invaded Ukraine, we put, placed a bunch of sanctions on them. They've been settling trades with China. They've been they've they've not been using the dollar with China. They've not been using the dollar with India. They've been accepting rubles in return. They've been doing some other interesting stuff. So this is an all out. You can call it an assault. You can call it a swift. But it's a global realignment of the underlying financial institutions. You're going. It's again. All of those countries I just mentioned, let's go ahead and read them again. Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, Iran, Egypt, Ethiopia, and the United Arab Emirates. I mean, you're talking about Russia, India, China, UAE. Huge countries involved with both the buying and selling of oil and gas. Now they can explicitly go around the U.S. dollar. 
It's not good. If you are somebody who is of the mindset that we are coming into a recession here in the United States, this doesn't bode well because this attacks the heart of the idea that, well, the dollar will always be around because it's the global reverb currency. Well, are we sure about that? Are we sure about that? So huge story here. When Stu gets back, we'll definitely have to talk about we have been following this one for a while and will continue to follow Bricks getting off Swift. If if you have any, if you have any, uh, I wonder what it's going to be called in the first place. It's got to be called something cool. So feel free to leave a comment on YouTube if you, if you think you know what it's going to be called. I don't know if I have any good comes uh, guesses right now, but it's got it's got to have a good name. So it will be interesting to see what it is. Let's move over to the UK, folks. This is unbelievable. Potential increase in gas gas bills for UK households. Households that delay switching to heat pumps may face a $2,000 increase in their energy bills. And I'm going to read now straight from the article. This is because the cost of maintaining the current gas network of 175,000 miles of pipes and pumps will spread out to fewer and fewer customers as more people switch to low carbon heat systems. Okay, so that that's the top line quotes here. If you just read the first couple lines, this is hilarious though, okay? So according to these OFGM projections, these gas chargers are going to, it's going to slowly happen throughout 2020 into the 2030s, but will significantly increase in 2040 and could potentially reach two thousand dollars per year this is funny okay so right now they're saying basically hey gotta switch to heat pumps because it's going to be cheaper and they're saying well it's going to be spread out to few and fewer people because everybody is switching to heat pumps but then you get deeper down in the article here okay industry statistics show that in four years between 2020 and 2024 the uk installed a Paltry 250,000 heat pumps, while 25.5 million homes still use oil or gas boilers. It's why you can't just read the headlines, folks. You read the headlines, you say, oh, great, everybody's switching to heat pumps. We're all good. No, no, no. No one's switching to heat pumps, just like nobody's really driving EVs, even though they want you to know that. So this cost that's going to be, it's why not keeping up with your infrastructure is critical because if you can if you invest on a yearly basis in keeping up your infrastructure, sometimes this stuff doesn't happen because then you have to go in all at once and fix it all. According to an OFGEM spokesperson, he told Energy News, Energy Live News, decisions on the future of the gas network are for the government. Our role to ensure the transition away from natural gas is fair and the lowest possible cost to the current and future covers. The transition away from natural gas is fair. To me, that seems like an oxymoron. How can you transition away from the lowest cost fuel and expect it to be fair and lowest possible cost? Very interesting. Final de- Here's another quote from them. Final decisions on the gas network investment expenditure for the period of 2026 to March 30, 2031 will be taken next year following the current constellation. We know with the new pretty pretty insane government, liberal government that got elected in the UK, you know, they're probably going to try to make this number as high as they can just gouge as many people. Department for Energy Security and Net Zero. What a de- what a department name. Energy Security and Net Zero. <laughs> what is that? We need that. What was that famous video of the Argentinian president where he's just he's just pulling all of the the departments off and firing whole departments? This is one where we knew a fuego. We need to get here in the UK. You need to get rid of the Department for Energy Security and Net Zero. But this spokesperson told, I mean, that's just he's just a spokesperson for this. And this someone's getting paid to do this. By the way, this is this cracks me up. Uh, we are on a mission to make Britain a clean energy superpower to cut bills, create jobs, and deliver energy security with cheaper. Zero carbon electricity by 2030. Good luck. We hope you don't freeze the death up there. Let's go ahead and jump over into oil and gas finance. Guys, before we do that, I want to just say thank you to energynewsbeat.com, the best place for all of your energy and oil and gas news. It's doing the team do a tremendous job making sure that website stays up to speed. Everything we need to know to be the tip of the spear when it comes to the energy and the oil and gas business. All the news and analysis you just heard is brought to you by said website. And I also want to tell you about an awesome partnership that we're that we're excited to launch here. We are partnering up with our friend Ray Trevino over at the Crew Truth and Pecos Country Operating to help you guys get a sneak peek and help you guys get access to investing in oil and gas. I'm a big believer right now that 
you know, if you've listened to this show at nauseum, you know that I personally love oil and gas. I think the arbitrage between oil and gas and other alternative investments is absolutely incredible right now. There's a big opportunity to get in. That's why we're partnering up with Pecos. They have an awesome oil and gas project that they have been rolling out. We've been working with him for, for, for months now to get this thing up. It's been up. We've been talking to a bunch of people, but I want to bring it specifically to you guys at the Daily Energy News Beat. Go ahead and hit the description below for a little uh, sneak preview of the project. You leave your name, email, and we will get you, and you will be able to download and look at the executive summary. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out, whether it's in the YouTube comments or connect with me on LinkedIn. But we look forward to, to talking with you guys about that. It's an awesome project. We're a part of it, and it's none other sponsored by Ray Trevino and the, the folks over at the Crew Truth and Pecos Country Operating. Love the stuff. We were out there at the, at the drill site yesterday. We're recording this Saturday afternoon. I was out there all day making whole folks. There's nothing funner than going out and drill wells. So go ahead, check that out, guys. Really excited about this opportunity to invest in oil and gas. Check it out. Let's go ahead and, and you know, speaking of oil and gas, let, let, let's look at prices here. Overall, before we do that, though, let's look at the overall markets. S&P 500 actually rebounded a little bit after a fairly rough week. It was up 1.1 percentages on Friday. NASDAQ up 1.03 percentage points. Two and 10-year yields actually fell about a percentage point with a 10-year a little bit worse, about 1.2 percentage points on the downside. Dollar index very flat. Bitcoin, after... You know, what we heard on, you know, Thursday, Friday, strategic Bitcoin reserve, all the stuff that went off at the Bitcoin Nashville conference, only up about three, three quarters of a percent, or excuse me, um, a quarter of a percentage point, still $68,000. A coin. It's going to be interesting to see what that strategic Bitcoin reserve looks like if and when President Trump does get reelected. Crude oil didn't have a great day on Friday. Things got slashed about 1.5 percentage points, settled at 77.16. And as we open here shortly, as we record this Sunday afternoon, it's probably going to open a little bit less. Hopefully, we see some overnight rotation. But we'll, you know, in my opinion, as you guys listen to this on Monday morning, we will probably be trading a little bit less than where we currently currently are. Main reasons for that. Again, a lot to do. You know, right now we're, I think people have priced in a little bit what's going to happen in November. Obviously, it, you know, from all indications, it looks like President Trump will win, even though it looks like some of the polls tend to be slipping a little bit with Vice President Harris now coming in and replacing. And I think that everything's settling out around kind of the craziness we saw with Joe Biden dropping out. But we did see some, some, some Chinese demand numbers that come out that both one China total fuel imports dropped about 11% in the first half of 2024, which really raises a bigger concern about the overall wider demand outlook and what's going on in China. Again, we're in a world of supply and demand. We, you know, supply might be heading in the right direction, but we don't, if the demand numbers aren't going to be there, might be interesting. So here's George Cudry. He's head of education and research at CFI. Quote, yesterday's better than expected U.S. GDP growth figures initially supported the crude markets. However, these gains were overshadowed by concerns of the declining Chinese oil demand. Bob Yeager, he's one of our favorite guys, director of energy futures over at Mizuho in New York. The Chinese demand situation is going down the tubes here and crude oil prices are going down with it. And that is about the worst possible scenario for a country that is the largest importer of crude oil and the planet. So, Pretty, pretty, you know, I, I, I'm i not totally doom and gloom. I, I, you know, as I was talking with some friends last week, you know, you can make an argument one way or the other that as China demand goes, so do oil prices, especially if the Saudis decide to increase production. But all indication is the Saudis really need higher oil prices to continue to balance budgets and support the investment they're making, ironically, in trying to shift their economy away from oil and gas. So I'm not necessarily worried that Saudis all of a sudden now going to go to war with U.S. shale like they did back in 2014, 2015. But you you never know. Looks like there there could be a ceasefire in Gaza. It schemes to be claiming momentum, so that could drill down. We also did see rig counts drop on Friday. Um, we'll go ahead and throw that chart up here. Rig counts up to five. 89. That's an increase of three week over week. Still down 75 year over year. Canada saw an increase of 14. Go Canada, go. I mean, it's pretty funny. Canada, for as woke as they're going right there, 14 rigs. We got to love it. Uh, internationally, we saw four rigs come up. So again, you know, rigs are a little 
yes, rigs are tied to oil price, but they're also a little bit, but the, you know, these numbers are also a little bit behind. So some of these rigs were picked up maybe back when oil was looking like it was going to maybe go above 85. So you can't necessarily say, well, oil was down on Friday. Why are people increasing rigs? It's a little bit more nuanced than that. But, but I do think that it's good to see kind of that, that turnaround with, with rig counts. And again, if we're going to want to maintain whatever our supply is now, maybe because of the Chinese demand situation, the supply does maybe naturally need to come down. So could be interesting there. I, I did see this, guys. This this actually just dropped right before the show. Vital Energy nearing a deal to buy Point Energy for $1.1 billion. You know, super interesting. Point Energy Partners is, a, is an exclusive Delaware producer. They're owned by Vortis Investments. And Vital's looking at, at acquiring them with about $1.1 billion, according to people here. Quote, according with people familiar with the matter said, uh, in it, blah, blah, blah. What's also interesting is, the, is I'll read now straight from the article, the deal for the Permian Basin Focus Producer Point Energy could be announced soon, possibly as early as Sunday, assuming talks do not have a last-minute sag, according to the sources, requesting a nominity. This is also interesting. Some of Point Energy's assets will also be sold to a different buyer that is participating in the transaction alongside Vital, according to the sources. Those assets are low growth, but produce steady amounts of oil and gas. If you go look on Point Energy Partners website, they're pretty much an exclusive Delaware producer. They've got about 20,000 acres in the Delaware and do about 40,000 barrels a day. So it's going to be pretty honest. You know, it's, it's BOE. So we just, I need, we need to, you know, hard to know what that, what that oil and gas split is. You can go check out our friends at Well Database. They'll be able to tell you. Haven't had necessarily an opportunity to dive in and do that, but I promise you if this thing happens, this may be a great, a great another deal spotlight for us to cover. But yeah, so I think this is the wave of M&A we're now in and consolidation is mainly alongside, you're now going to see these smaller companies. And I think a lot of what these private equity companies are doing are maybe they see the writing on the wall and they feel like $80, $75 oil is going to be as high as prices go and they're trying to cash out. Maybe, you know, some of this stuff just falls along their traditional five-year investment cycle. So they need to cash out, but this would be an all cash deal, which again, obviously you need. So, so, you know, M&A still around here, folks. We love vital energy. They're, you know, in my, you know, from what I've seen from them, they're one of the, the, the most technology focused and, and, and make it a point to be it and technology focused. Um, so we love our friends over at vital energy. We wish them well. And, you know, again, anybody who takes technology seriously, we are a fan of, but looks like vital energy going to swoop up point energy partners for 1.1 billion we'll see if it wraps up maybe we'll hear about this you'll hear about this as you listen to this monday morning maybe it'll take a few more days well, i'm interested who this other smaller player is obviously it's you, you it's you wonder who it is to be honest with you if if it's it's probably not a big it's probably not a larger company it's probably a you know a smaller guy depending on where they'll be but you know when this all wraps up we will definitely come back and bring you all of the details guys that's really all I've got. I appreciate everybody checking us out here on the world's greatest website. Stu will be hopefully back in the chair tomorrow, so we'll be able to, to cover everything, but I'm holding it down. Otherwise, thanks for checking us out, guys. We will be back tomorrow. We'll see you then.